as we get further and further the season, and I can't wait. Moving on to our final topic, um, and, and again, before we obviously get the final round, we'll be the top two point getters, but our third round rules put them up here. Great take gives you an 800 points. A good take gives you 400 points. An okay take gives you 200, and a bad take is still zero. And the fact of the matter is, uh, there is a 100 point difference between our top or our, our, our three panelists tonight, so you know this could come down to the wire. So let's shift to the NBA. Let's shift to some hoops, and the most popular team, the Lakers, and those popular players still, I believe, at least, in LeBron James. So the Lakers lost last night to the Miami Heat uh, by a final score of, uh, if I could pull it up here, I think it was 108 uh, to uh, 107 against the Miami Heat. Uh, LeBron James played absolutely outstanding once again, despite being near 21, uh, 30 uh, 30 points uh, on 13 of 23 shooting. But Lakers lost the end. Anthony Davis got hurt. Uh, LeBron James, the plus minus for the Lakers when LeBron is on and off the floor is absolutely staggering. Their offensive rating uh, with him, without him is is staggering as well. So I'll start with you, Alfred. You're a Lakers fan. Uh, Do you think the Lakers are too reliant, despite what appears to be a pretty good roster, too reliant on LeBron James? I would say yes, and I'll tell you why. Um, You mentioned AD didn't finish the game last night, got hurt. If you look at the current Lakers injury report and guys who have missed games, mind you, the the season's only two weeks in, and you have guys who have missed significant time already. Uh, Jared Vanderbilt, yet to play. Uh, Rui Hachimura, since the third game of the season, has been on the injury report. First, he had an eye contusion, and now he's got a concussion. Uh, no Gabe Vincent, who, who, who's who been proven to be a, a lethal perimeter player. So, I mean, uh, it, it's rough when you're, when you're missing key guys. And then um, from watching all these Laker games, especially the recent games, uh, the two games they had against the Orlando Magic, uh, and even the game against the Clippers, when LeBron is not on the floor, the offense just doesn't click. Um, you got guys like Austin Reeves, who's been who's uh, struggled in most of the games this season. Uh, of course, with with no AD, he's built like glass. He's just fragile. You never know uh, when he, when he needs to get carted off the floor. Um, but but yeah, they they don't have a choice but to rely on LeBron because again, LeBron. You know, it, it, I think when guys play against LeBron, most guys it's a mental thing. They're like, oh snap, it's LeBron James, greatest player in the world. So it, it's a bit of a mental effect, and he does play bully ball still at at, at the great age of thirty eight, but. I mean, at some point, it, it, it's, it's just not going to hold up. Um, but, but they do rely on LeBron because they have no other choice. Who else could they put the, put the ball in the hands of? Cam Reddish? Um, Austin Reeves? No. Like, uh, the, te- the team is just, is just injury riddled at the moment, so they don't have a choice but to put it in the hands of, of their aging superstar, which is unfortunate because in the offseason, I think they, they should have went and got him some help. Um, and then even guys like, uh, like Christian Wood, if it inconsistent so far to start the season. So I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a bit worried for the Lakers at this point. There's no reason why injuries should be piling up for amongst their key players this early in the season. But to answer the question, yes, they do rely too much on LeBron only because they have no choice to, if he's not going to, he's a facilitator and a scorer. And it seems like nobody else on the team right now can do it. Yeah, and look, you know, if I were a Lakers fan, which I would, you never catch me dead in, in that position, but if I were a Lakers fan, I would look at this team and say, you know what, or look at your take, really, and say, okay, if this is an injury problem, this seems to be fixed. Well, obviously, we know Anthony Davis's injury history. You mentioned uh, Jared Vanderbilt. You mentioned Gabe Vincent missing time, and Austin Reeves kind of going, kind of, kind of having up and down stretches this season. Cam Reddish, who you mentioned, obviously missed the game-winning shot there at the end, uh, and is shooting a pretty low percentage from three-point range. But real quick, before I move to Mike, I, I do want to say this. Uh, I brought this stab, uh, stat up. So again, the Lakers' offensive rating uh, without him uh, is uh, is is one sixteen. Uh, yeah, the one uh, with him, sorry, with him, the Lakers offensive rating is 116.7 without him. It plummets to 91.2. So it's a different basketball team. And they go from being like the, 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 the Denver nuggets, basically, you know, with him on the floor to being the, the freaking Orlando magic or these days, the Memphis Grizzlies, uh, in terms of offensive rating. So I'll move to you, Micah, you're, you're a big LeBron guy, uh, Cavs fan, uh, by the way, congratulations on ending an incredible losing streak against the Golden State Warriors on Sunday. I'm very proud of your team. It's about time. But, uh, that said, um, do you think the Lakers are relying too much on LeBron? right now obviously uh, I think it's it's happened throughout LeBron's entire career I mean this is just the way that LeBron teams work you know what I mean it, first stint with the Cavs he puts them in the playoffs every single year making it to multiple Eastern Conference finals and what happens he leaves and the Cavs get the number one pick in the draft with the exact same roster like it's 
it happened in Miami. They didn't play the same. They the offense didn't flow the same way when it was D Wade and Chris Bosh who was who were running things. Same thing happened the second time in Cleveland when LeBron wasn't on the floor. Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love couldn't get it done. Now it's the same thing here with the Lakers, and especially since Anthony Davis is getting hurt, who they just can't seem to rely on in almost any capacity to this point. Um, but listen, if you just do a little bit of digging, right? A lot of LeBron's game is drive and kick right? It's that's to the point where he is in his career. He's still scoring a bunch, but a lot of his game is drive and kick, drive the lane, kick to a guy on the outside so they can hit threes, right? That's what they do. Okay. Austin Reeves is shooting 31% from three. That's not good. D'Angelo Russell is shooting 27% from three. That's not good. Cam Reddish is shooting 15% from three. That's not good. Max Christie is shooting 12 and a half percent from three. That's not good. A lot of these guys that they need to rely on to hit these shots for LeBron they just don't work, period. And when he's not on the floor, they ju- Alfred's exactly right. They don't have anybody right now that can truly facilitate an effective offense. They just don't do. They don't have it. They don't have very many guys that can create their own shot. They don't have very many big body guys that can get their own basket down at the rim. So, absolutely, it's this way. It's the way it's been for LeBron his entire career. It, this is just when LeBron is not on the floor. Listen, this roster was designed for LeBron to be able to play 30 minutes a night and be done with it. Now he's got to play 38 to 40. Listen, it's going to bite them when it comes to playoff time if they're in that position. So, uh, listen, obviously it's like this. It's always been like this for LeBron. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about his his value to 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 franchises, and you mentioned it twice with the Cavs and with Miami, they missed the playoffs. The great Miami Heat missed the playoffs. The great culture they have. I mean, the Lakers, again, like you said, they, they can't survive when, when he's off the floor. Finally, with you, John, John, do you think the Lakers are too reliant on the great LeBron James? Yeah, yeah, just like you uh, both guys said, you know, with injuries, you know, injuries going down. They did build a team, you know, kick and drive. That's why they brought all the shooters over there, shoot, kick. You know what I mean? They're not hitting no shots. So if you ain't hitting no shots, you're not going to look good as well. You know, like I said, AD, they try to shift it, you know, the team to AD, but that didn't happen. As you see, like I said, he's about to miss some more games. Like he was about to say, but yeah, they definitely put too much on LeBron James, man. And, and like you said, when once he leaves the court, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, who are these guys? Now we can, you know, they they just killed them, killed them backup guys because they're not afraid or intimidated or starstruck, like Alfred said, when LeBron James is on the court. You know what I mean? So they definitely put in too much on LeBron. You know what I mean? It's like they just standing around, like you said, even though that's his game. You know, get the ball and shoot, fire the shooters. But, yeah, they definitely putting too much on LeBron. And they try to, you know, the first couple games, they try to do the minute restrictions. You see how quick that lasted, you know what I mean? <laughs> Talking about uh, whatever, whatever, and then we're going to put the seasons for this season, the minutes for this season. But that didn't last long due to injuries and due to later struggles. So, you know what I mean? It's definitely going to bite them at the end if you're going to play LeBron all these big minutes and stuff like that and picking up the slack for other teammates, you know what I mean, that's not playing well at the moment, you know what I mean? But. Yeah, at this moment, they're definitely, you know, using LeBron James way too much. Glad he brought up the minutes restriction because that that that, that is I remember when Darvin Ham and then LeBron is sort of you know kind of pushed back on a little bit because LeBron's like, hey, I don't care if I'm year 21, man. I want to play, I want to play as much as possible. And, and Darvin Ham comes out with this minute restriction. I'm like, yeah, let's see how long this lasts. And it lasted, if I'm not mistaken, about two games when he had to play extra for them to beat the, the Phoenix Suns in the second game right. of the season. And uh for the record, by the way, LeBron James is averaging 36 minutes a game. So that they they've basically just thrown that in the trash barely two weeks into the season. So that's that's a real genuine concern for them. Okay, so let's get to our points. All right, actually, you know what? Let's not get to our point totals. Let's, let me tell you who the two finals are. They are Mike Guido and John Rivera. For the first time, sir, you are going to the final round. I apologize, uh, Alfred. There, a solid take. Give you a thousand points there, but uh, Alfred Parso Jr. unfortunately is not able to to advance uh, to, to, to to the. Um, but I will say this, Alfred. You know what? You put up a far more admirable effort than the Jets' offensive line last night. I will give you credit for that, sir. I will give Thank you. you. It, was, it was it was an admirable wow. performance. Admirable. Wow. John, uh, Alfred, uh, good stuff, and uh, we'll talk to you here at the end of the show, man.